This is a brief introduction to the PicoScope, which is a PC-based oscilloscope. It looks like this. It has a USB connector on one end. You can plug signals into the A port or the B port. So it's connected to the computer via USB cable. And when you, once you make the connection, then you need to go to the Start menu and load the program, PicoScope 6. You might hear some clicks coming from the actual device. And then the software comes up. So when we turn on, we see this. Currently we're connected to a function generator that has a 1 kilohertz sine wave with an amplitude of 40, 400 millivolts peak to peak. So moving back to the screen over here, what's going on? So when you first look at it, you look, it might look like a sine wave. You can't really tell. So it could be that the time base is off. So the time base is the amount of time that occurs between the divisions on the screen right here. So currently we're at 50 microseconds per division. Because this is a one kilohertz sine wave, I know the period is one millisecond. It's pretty easy for me just to go down here on the scroll list, set it to one millisecond. And now we could see there indeed is a sine wave on there. It's just really difficult to read because it's jumbled up on the screen. So in order to freeze that into place, there's something called a trigger. If you go in the lower left-hand corner here, you'll see a trigger drop-down menu. Right now it's set to none. If you set it to auto, the waveform all of a sudden freezes on the screen. So the waveform is still moving, it's not paused, but it's synchronized to the refresh rate of the oscilloscope such that it looks like it's standing still. So say if I wanted to change the amplitude from say 400 down to 200, you could see right there, you know, the amplitude changed but the waveform didn't mix up on the screen. So you might have noticed when I was doing that, that the waveform appeared to change size and then it jumped to another size. That's because the vertical amplifier or the voltage range is set to auto. If you look in the upper left-hand corner right here, you'll see there's this auto button. So what it does is it detects when the oscilloscope, when the waveform is too large, it changes the scale or similarly, if it's too small, it'll, it'll make the, uh, the scale more fine grained. So a lot of times you want to turn it off auto because it might fake you out. You know, you might think the signal is getting smaller when it's actually getting larger. So I recommend setting it on an appropriate voltage. Right now we're going to set it on one volt. That means that our full scale goes between one volts and negative one volts on the lower end here. So if we wanted to read this waveform, say we set it to 400 millivolts peak to peak on the function generator, now what are we seeing on the picoscope? So we're seeing a sine wave that has a peak amplitude of 0.2 volts and a bottom uh, is negative peak amplitude of minus 0.2 volts. So if we add those together, it's going to the uh, total voltage peak to peak is going to be 0.4 volts because it's 0.2 plus 0.2. So if we change that, we can increase that to 500 millivolts. thousand millivolts. So now we're at one volt peak to peak and you can see indeed that's similar on the oscilloscope. It's showing us a peak of 0.5 and a negative peak of minus 0.5. So indeed the peak to peak voltage is one volt. If we want to measure that graphically we could use something called a cursor. If you look in the lower or sorry in the upper right upper left hand corner there's this little blue box right here. If you grab the blue box with the mouse it drags down a dotted line. So if I put that at the peak of the waveform, then you'll notice a dialog box appears here, and the dialog box has the voltage in it. It says 498 millivolts. Now I could go grab another cursor and drag that down to the negative peak. And when I grab that second cursor, some more numbers appear in the dialog. So the first number is the voltage level of this cursor. The second number is the level of this cursor, and the delta right here is the difference between the two. And indeed, the delta is 998.8 millivolts, or approximately one volt. So that's saying that the voltage on the oscilloscope reconciles with the voltage on the oscilloscope screen. Now, how do we measure the period of a waveform? So we can look at the amount of time between the same signals are the same points in the waveform, like say, you know, if we look at the negative peak here, if this is a 100 or 1000 hertz signal, 
the time delay between these is going to be one millisecond. So it's a little hard to tell if that's one millisecond because we're not falling on the grid. So on the lower left hand corner we have time cursors. It's that little white box. Similarly if we grab the time cursor, put it on the negative peak, then if we look up at the top of the screen, we can see in our dialog here a time mark appeared. Then we could drag the other cursor over to the next negative peak. And then if we look at the dialog here, we have the two time marks and then the, de the delta between them is 1.015 milliseconds, which again shows us that this is a one kilohertz sine wave, you know, which reconciles with the frequency that we have on the function generator. Now, if you want, you could connect two different channels to the picoscope. So this is the instrument right here. And you can see we have one BNC connector that's connected to the output of our function generator. Say you wanted to measure the output of your circuit. You could connect another connector to the B terminal. So luckily we have another function generator right here. So I could turn that one on and use that as a second channel. Now I'm going to make a BNC connection to it. Plug into the output terminal plug into channel B of the picoscope. Now we have two signals connected up to the picoscope. I'm going to change the frequency of the lower one just so we can see the difference between the two waveforms. So that's a 2.1 kilohertz now. So in order to see the second trace we need to turn it on and you do that by going to the upper left hand corner of the screen and you'll see a B and right now it's set to off so we want to set that to a voltage level. So you could set it to auto, and then a waveform appears on the screen right there. But it might be more convenient to set it to, say, 1 volt. So now we have both of our voltage axes, the blue one, which is channel A, and the red one, which is channel B, have the same range. They're both plus minus 1 volt. So that's something important to look out for when you're making measurements with the picoscope is that the blue channel, channel A, scale reads off of the blue numbers on the left hand side of the screen and the B channel, the red channel's numbers, read off of the right hand scale on the screen. So say if I had this set to 100 millivolts peak to peak instead of 1 volt peak to peak, indeed the scale on the right hand side is different than it is on the left hand side. Now, if we want to change the amplitude and the frequency of our lower waveform, we set that to 2 kilohertz. So when we do that, because that's an integer multiple of 1 kilohertz, the waveforms appear to, to freeze on the screen. And we could also change the amplitude of the lower instrument, push the amplitude button, make it a little bit lower so more of it appears on the screen. So now we have two, two sine waves on the screen. There's a 1 kilohertz sine wave and a 2 kilohertz sine wave. And indeed, we could see that because there are two full cycles of the red, which is the 2 kilohertz sine wave, for each one of the blue sine wave, which is a 1 kilohertz sine wave. 